Go ahead, sir. I'm Bob Brigham from Newington, Connecticut, and I don't think I'm going to curry any favor with this crowd with my comments, but I'll go forward. I'd just I'd like to read a brief quote. Um, Starting today, every agency and department should know that this administration stands on the side not of those who seek to withhold information, but those who seek to make it known. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. I guess you don't have to guess who made those quotes. That was President Obama in his inauguration in 2009. In light of the administration's lack of action, full disclosure and honesty with regards to Fast and Furious, Benghazi, NSA spying, lies about Obamacare, IRS corruption scandal, Lois Lerner pleading the fifth, two years of lost IRS emails and erased missing hard drives, which is really hard to accept. DOJ spying on James Rosen and the AP, Lack of leadership on Syria, Egypt, and Iran, Russia's move into Crimea, border security, illegal aliens streaming into the country, which has made the news just recently, but it's been going on for months. Young 12, 11 year olds come streaming into the country, bringing diseases that were long ago eradicated in the U.S. Nothing's being done. The Iraq debacle traveling to California for a fundraiser and golf while Iraq burns. Keystone Pipeline. Now, we, a number of people have mentioned the Keystone Pipeline in, from the environmental issue. That has been studied three days to Sunday by the DOE, DOJ, and a number of government agencies, and they found minimal, minimal environmental impact possibilities in that pipeline. Yeah, two years down the road, and we have nothing. The national debt of $17 trillion spiraling, going higher. Lavish and extravagant parties by the various government agencies. Out of control government spending at a time of fiscal peril. peril. Lack of action with regards to Dr. Miriam Ibrahim. She's being held in a Sudanese prison awaiting execution, beheaded for being a Christian. I called your office on this issue a couple of weeks ago, never got a response. I called the Washington office, and at the time I called the Washington office, and said, well, I, I speak to I apologize for that, because you should have received a response. And I, we should pride ourselves on that, so I apologize, and we will make sure that we get your response. I have written these two letters a year ago addressing a number of these issues. Right. No response. I you called. have no response on any of those issues no, in our office? No, not one. Starting with Obamacare, let's go down the list. I, I, I addressed all these issues in one letter, not, not a response. I called your Washington office, I called your Hartford office, it's a will look into it. No. Do you, Representative Larson, believe that President Obama has lived up to his original promises based upon the quote that I just read? And what do you plan, uh, what do you, how do you plan to rectify these gross injustices imposed upon the American people? Allowing the United States Congress to vote, for one. Letting, the, letting the United States Congress vote. Let us vote, starting with what happened here in Connecticut, in Sandy Hook, and the outrage on behalf of so many parents, where 91% of the American nice people say we ought to have reasonable background checks on guns, that we ought to keep them out of the hands of the mentally ill and criminals, that there ought to at least be a vote on a jobs bill put forward by the President of the United States, not blocked in the United States Congress, but an actual vote that takes place, that there ought to be a vote on an immigration bill, including make sure that we protect the border, but also allow people to pass forward to citizenship. There ought to be a vote on taking money out of politics and making sure that we have open and fair elections. Just simply a vote, as opposed to talking points and criticism. In a democracy, ultimately, citizens should demand of their representatives that they vote. And in Congress, we have not had a vote 
on any of those issues in the House of Representatives. Or the Senate. The Senate has passed an immigration bill. The Senate has extended unemployment. The Senate has tried to get a jobs bill to the floor, but instead it gets blocked. Now listen, no matter where you agree, where you stand on any of these issues, and I respect people that disagree with me, and they frequently do, but as citizens, you're entitled to a vote. And that's what needs to take place in Congress more than anything else. Now, the Affordable Care Act has been repealed 54 times in the House of Representatives. Could we have one vote on jobs? Could we have one vote on immigration? Could we have one vote that would say a proposal by the most conservative Democratic Senator, Joe Manchin, the most conservative Republican Senator, Pat Toomey, that narrowly restricts the ability to get firearms and prevent them from getting into the hands of criminals and the mentally ill. I don't think that's a lot to ask. And instead of having to stand in silence again as another shooting, something else unfolds, it'd be nice to take a vote. It'd be nice to take a vote. And so I wish they would give a number of the president's proposals votes. They've done an awful lot of investigation, an awful lot of hearings about what's going on, but we haven't had an opportunity to actually vote on the merits of a proposal. That'd be nice to see. With all due respect, these weren't Mr. Obama's proposals. These were issues that are not being answered. We're not getting answers for the vast majority of the items that I just pointed out. These are not Obama's proposals. If he doesn't get a vote in Congress, what does he do? He passes an executive uh, order. Mm -hmm. That's how he gets things passed. By well, he passes order. executive orders to the limited extent that the executive has authority there. Well, that, that's up for debate. Because when, he's, when he says, when he, says he can use his phone and his pen to get what he wants, that's what you should no, be. He, he says he will use his, his pen. He asks Congress to respond. And if they won't, he will use his pen where he has executive authority. And where he has executive authority is amongst federal employees. And so he narrowly is able to use his authority with respect to federal employees, he's not able to use it without Congress assenting to a bill. He did it with Obamacare, sir, for any number of Obamacare. Changes. But how did he do that with Obamacare? I mean, what, I, I don't understand this. I mean, this is sure, constantly last, preached by the right the, wing. The last I heard, it was like 30 some times he made changes to the Obamacare law. I mean, you can, you can, you know, you so, can shake your head. All right, so, okay. all right, can I explain? Yeah. Okay, so the bill was passed, right? What happens once a bill is passed? Regulations are promulgated. Those regulations then go into effect. Those regulations are subject to review on behalf of the Congress. The President, and people I know because I've written on behalf of many people, when changes are promulgated in regulations, and God only knows, there's a lot more that could be done and improved with the Affordable Care Act. Would it be that people were willing to sit down and compromise? But that isn't the case. Would it be that they would be even willing to sit down and vote? Even in the case where it extends benefits to people, Eric Cantor, had to pull forward a bill because even though it would benefit people and didn't raise any taxes because it was associated with the president, it couldn't withstand the scrutiny of the Tea Party. And so it was pulled. The Tea Party. Unfortunately, that's what's going on in the United States Congress. You keep referring to Tea Party. The Tea Party is not a party, it's an ideology, and they're in favor of small and limited and less taxes from the government, sir. Thank you very well, much. Well, 
And God bless them for that. And uh, they may very well be in favor of that. But the way that they go about it, the expense that they put the country through. You live in the Northeast. After the hurricane, and after all the money that this region of the country sends to every other state, when Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York were devastated by hurricanes, should we be entitled to relief from the federal government? Or should we hear, no, 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 you are not entitled to that relief because that will cost money. Taxes may have to be raised. That would be bigger government. It's a false argument. However noble the idea of smaller government, less taxes may be, how you execute it, how you're trying to accomplish that goal can be far different in its consequences. Just ask Chris Christie in what he had to say to those in the House of Representatives who blocked that proposal. Money always flows from the Northeast to the South, right. to the Southwest, devastated by tornado and hurricanes, to brush fires that take place out in the Far West. So, as a nation, we need to do a lot better job, and it starts with just voting. I will give them credit for this. They at least voted, whether they voted against it or not, they voted for it. To see 199 of them vote, to see the country default, wherever you stand on that, at least they voted. And people have a better understanding of how they feel because of that. I would just like an opportunity as the elected representative from this district to vote on the issues that I think are important to this district and the rest of the country as well.